everybody my name is Jara and I'll be the student nurse today and I will be um, assessing my patient's thorax and lungs um, but before I do that I would like to do some interview because um, I've never seen this patient here before so I will just go over some um, questions with him and um, after that I will um, do my physical assessment um, on the thorax and lungs so um, first you would like to uh, verify the the patient's name and date of birth um, by asking them, Hi sir, my name is Jara and uh, I'll be your student nurse today. Um, I just want to verify your full name and your date of birth. All right, Mr. John Doe, um, 40 years old. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, sir. Um, all right, so I will be um, doing an interview with you that way. Um, we could gather some data from you um, and also we could also see if there's any symptoms present or any past um, medical history or any family illnesses um, present that way we could uh, put everything together and um, we'll do a, 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 an assessment for your lungs and your thorax okay all right so um, I would just like to check if you have any current symptoms like difficulty in breathing, um, like if you're doing any activities or at rest, if you have noticed um, any difficulty when you're, when you're breathing. What about on your, when you're sleeping? Okay, he answered no. Um, any chest pain associated with cold or um, fever or uh, in deep breathing? He said no. Do you have any cough um, that has um, some sputum in it? He said no. So any um, history of respiratory problem? No. Any thoracic um, surgery, biopsy, or um, trauma? No. Any allergies, symptoms, or treatments? He said he might have some allergies um, just for like seasonal allergies. All right, any pulmonary studies um, test um, like chest x-ray, TB skin test, or influenza immunization? Um, he said he's taking some flu shots every year. Um, no history of chest x-ray or TB skin test. Um, any family history with lung disease? He said no. Do you use any tobacco products like cigarettes um, or you know cigars? And how many do you uh, consume? He said he's not smoking. Any exposure to environmental um, conditions like um, um, you know asbestos or anything that could affect you at work or at home? What about any secondhand smoke from your neighbors or from anyone in your family? He said no. Um, any difficulty performing the usual daily activities? He said sometimes he's um, having some difficulty breathing when he is exercising. Do you get stressed and when you're stressed, um, do you have any effect in your breathing? He said he's getting some stress um, at times when he's at work, but um, only when he's having some anxiety attacks, probably he's experiencing some breathing problems like shortness of breath. But right now he doesn't have any shortness of breath. Medication for breathing, like um, any OTC drugs or any breathing um, treatments, like if you have any um, asthma or anything like that. He said no. All right, so thank you for um, giving me all those information. Um, so after this one, I will be um, um, doing your um, physical assessment on your thorax and lungs, okay? So before I do this assessment for the patient, you want to make sure that you gather all your equipments in the room. Um, I have my um, stethoscope here, a pair of gloves, a pen or a marker, um, a ruler, and a gown for the patient to use. And so before I do this assessment, I would like to do my hand hygiene technique. 
and then you would like to um, introduce yourself and verify the um, information from your patient by asking their full name and their date of birth and that way it's matching on your chart so hi sir my name is Jordan. and I'll be your student nurse today I would like to verify your information what is your full name all right looks good and what is your um, date of birth okay perfect um, so for this procedure I would like to um, do the assessment for the thorax and the lungs so I would be um, touching different parts of your chest or your um, or your um, back I just want to make sure that you're comfortable for me doing that for you all right thank you so much so um, you would like to explain to the patient that um, you're doing this procedure and um, you would like to make them feel as comfortable as they can so um, so you would like to wear, um, do your hand hygiene technique and then wear your gloves. And then do the inspection for the patient by checking if there's any um, asymmetrical shoulders. Um, you wanna check their breathing pattern. Um, you wanna see how they're breathing. When they're seated like this, um, if, are they seated upright and then they're having uh, any difficulty in their breathing or are they um, having a normal breathing? So you wanna just visually inspect everything from the patient. Um, the conformity of the thorax and the shape of the thorax, if it's um, good. Um, if the patient have some history or if they have, they have some illnesses like um, fit, um, emphysema or COPD, usually their shoulders are raised up like this and they have a posture that's um, in a tripod position. It means that they have some um, experiencing difficulty in breathing or they have um, COPD or emphysema present. Um, so you want to just take note of that um, posture. Okay, so um, after everything else is inspected, you want to move on to your palpation. So you, you would like the patient um, um, have their back facing towards you, that way you could assess their back. So for this position, um, you would like to palpate first. Um, if there's any um, lesions, like some surface characteristics or any um, abnormalities present on the back or the posterior thorax. So you would like to um, palpate first. You would like to do this symmetrical. So you would like to check on top first, see if there's any um, abnormalities present. So this area is like the apical area of the um, of the lungs. This is by the shoulders. So we would like to check if there's any crackles or any um, it, if any um, popping sounds or anything like that upon um, palpation. So you would like to do this uh, um, both sides, okay? You don't want to be doing one side and then the other first. So you would like to check on both sides as you go along with your um, palpation. So, um, so after palpating, You would like to check um, intercoastal spaces if there are any um, irregularities. Everything should be symmetrical from the right and the left. All right, everything's looking good. Um, so you would like to also check the um, thorax expansion or the lung expansion. So you would like to place your your thumb at the um, at the um, around the T9 to T10 area intercostal spaces um, and then let the patient breathe in and as they breathe in you want to see if your um, thumbs are going um, are moving apart and going back in all right breathe in and breathe out all right so with this one the lung is expanding very well so next you would like to palpate for frematis you want to use your um, the um, ulnar edge of your palm of your ha one hand and then you want to do this um, starting from the um, apical area and then laterally okay 
So for this procedure, um, you want to um, have the patient say 99 as you do this along. Um, for this one, you would like to um, feel how the lungs respond with the sound of the patient. So go ahead and say 99, 99. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, Okay, so um, he already said um, the 99 and I didn't feel any abnormalities when he is um, saying those words. Um, otherwise, if you feel some um, irregularities when you're palpating um, using your owner of the hand, um, you can document that in your chart, but usually it should come um, you know, with a little vibration, but not too much. So um, that would be a normal finding. And then um, you would also like to um, check for uh, tone. So you want to palpate from the apex um, by the shoulders of the patient. And then um, you want to see if there's any um, any abnormalities and now you would like to um, percuss for tone um, you want to start on the apices of the um, of the back of the um, lungs and then um, you would also like to um, go across the shoulder of the patient to check on that one. So you want to percuss using your um, finger. And also you want to percuss the intercoastal spaces of the um, lungs. And you want to also um, percuss the lateral aspects of the lungs at the base of the lungs and see if there's any um, asymmetrical um, if there's anything that's not symmetrical everything's looking okay and then you would like to also do the um, diaphragmatic excursion um, for this one um, you would um, you would be able to measure the diaphragm um, um, area when the patient is breathing so for this one, you would need a ruler. So you would like to um, check any um, dull sounds. When, when there is dull sounds, you have to measure that area. And then going through when the patient also inhales. So let the patient inhale deeply. Okay, exhale, same thing. And then um, inhale again. So this is the area where he, I, I heard some dullness. So you wanna mark that with your, with your pen. And then let the patient do that again, inhale, and then tap, percuss. Exhale, so I could hear dullness here until this area here. So you want to measure that using your ruler and then see how many centimeters it is apart. So that's your diaphragmatic excursion. So basically it's about three to five um, centimeters and that's a normal reading. So you want to make sure that, that that's at the range um, for this patient. So he is um, okay. And then now I want I would like to use my stethoscope to auscultate for breath sounds. So so 
so for this one you would like to check on the normal breathing sounds okay um, so you want to just um, start on the apices here using the bell of the using the diaphragm just let the patient breathe normally in and out And then if you hear any um, abnormalities like um, adventitious sounds, you want to note, note um, put that in your notes as well. Um, if there's any crackles, any um, uh, wheezing sounds or anything um, abnormal, you want to make sure that which side of the lungs is um, present. And also um, you would like to check if there's any um, coarse or pleural friction going on in their lungs, if there's any like um, bubbling sounds, something like that. And then you would like to also um, auscultate for voice sounds. So for this one, you would like to ask the patient to, to, um, to repeat the phrase 90, 99. So this is the assessment for the bronchophony. Um, so for the bronchophony, you would like to make sure that um, when the patient's saying 99 upon um, doing your auscultation, um, you would like to hear some mumbling sounds when doing that. Otherwise, if it's too clear um, when you hear it from your stethoscope, it means there might be something going on, like there's some water or um, uh, pneumonia for the patient or some, some um, abnormalities present. So for this um, bronco bronchophony, um, you would like to start by um, letting the patient say 99. Okay, sir, please say 99, and then I will just do it um, um, posterior, um, laterally. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. Okay, very good. So I could hear a little bit of, um, 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 I could hear a little bit of distortion when they're so next I will be um, assessing the voice sounds for the patient using my stethoscope uh, for this one I would let the patient say 99 as I auscultate um, on her on his um, posterior thorax so in this procedure you would like to hear uh, a muffled sound because um, otherwise if you hear some clear 99 when you're auscultating it means um, there might have some um, fluid going on in their lungs so um, you would like to auscultate 99 okay so next, I would like to um, assess him for um, egophony, and I would like to let the patient say letter E, and if um, there's any um, clarity of that letter E, it means there's some liquid going on or fluid um, in their lungs. Otherwise, you would hear a murmured E. Okay, now I will move on to um, to the last one. It's the whisper um, pectoral key. Um, so I would like to ask the patient to whisper uh, one, two, and three um, uh, words. So I'll have the patient say one, two, three, and then I will do my auscultation. Okay, everything's okay. Everything's looking good. I don't see any abnormalities present um, upon auscultation. So, um, so for for this one, for the next one, I would like to assess the anterior thorax of the patient's um, lungs. So you would like to let them face towards you. Now I will be um, continuing the anterior thorax. So I will be assessing this patient on the anterior aspect. Um, so first you would like to also inspect um, if there's any abnormalities present. You would like to check the shape and the um, configuration to determine the um, anterior-posterior diameter 
to the transverse um, position um, diameters. Normally, it is about 1 is to 2. And then you would like to also inspect um, the position of the sternum. So the sternum should be here. Um, if there's any um, deviation on the sternum, the anterior lateral um, portion of it, check if there's any asymmetrical going on and if there's any abnormalities. And then you would also like to inspect the quality and pattern of respiration. So you would like to observe your patient and see if they're breathing normally. If there's any like difficulty in their breathing, crackling noise or anything that you could observe while um, the patient is uh, sitting down. You would like to also check in their position if they are having any trouble breathing um, in a certain position. So you would like to take note of that abnormalities. And then you would also like to check if there's any use of accessory muscles. And then when they're breathing normally, usually um, they should be breathing normally and um, comfortably. So next, I would like to palpate the tenderness um, and sensation using my fingers. So you would like to palpate um, first um, by the sternum of the patient. Um, above the sternum, that's where the lobes of the, um, the top lobe of the lungs is. So you want to check if there's any crackles or any tapping on that area. You want to palpate. Um, the sternum area if there's any um, um, anything that you could feel and then um, so you would like to also explain to the patient that um, you know you might you might be um, um, touching if there it's a female patient you would you you might be touching um, some parts of their breast All right, so if there's any masses going on, you would also feel that when you're palpating this area. And then now you're gonna um, palpate um, using Fremitis. If there's, um, again, you want to use the um, ulnar side of the, the one hand. So you wanna um, use this um, assessment again, Fremitis. But uh, let the patient say 99 as you do this. Okay, say 99. All right, thank you. And then, um, so for this one, you would like to also check the chest expansion. So you would like to place the um, your thumbs on the um, on this area here, and then um, you would like to see if there's any um, any deviation on their um, breathing. So we'd like to let the patient breathe in deep and out. So deep. Inhale and exhale. So you would like to see that your um, thumb is um, going together and apart upon breathing and exhaling and inhaling. So when they're breathing, you want to make sure that um, their lungs is expanding normally. So your your thumb are separating a little bit when they're inhaling and then when they're exhale exhaling, your thumbs are going closer together. So you want to auscultate now. Um, if there's any um, abnormalities present on their anterior thorax. You want to um, auscultate the normal breath sounds. Observe any crackles or any bubbling or any um, wheezing sounds when you're doing this. Okay, everything's looking okay. So my nursing diagnosis is ineffective breathing pattern um, related to seasonal allergies as evidenced by um, um, sneezing and coughing while outdoors. So if you need to refer the patient to um, any specialist, you can do this um, at the end. Um, otherwise, you want to evaluate the patient. Is everything doing okay? All right, so um, I will just give you some privacy um, to put on your clothes. Um, and then after this, we will, um, um, this will be the end of our assessment today. So you want to um, dismiss the patient after this procedure. Thank you.